<clears throat> All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to Apostle and Elders in New York, GMS, and uh, <clears throat> salutation to Yahweh around the world. That's uh, teaching the truth and shalom to you, sincere and serious. Uh, Akim Akwaf, that's our uh, reading scriptures, looking at videos, and enduring until the end of Esau's rulership. My name is Maya Ka'ala Nagaba with Chicago branch of GMS. <clears throat> I read this article, uh, I ain't gonna really, many things, one of many things piss you off. Those that really won't piss you off, man. All right, so this is all um, on Vice. It says right here, um, it says blacks were enslaved well into the 1960s. Okay, it says more than 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, there were black people in the deep south who had no idea they were free. These people were forced to work, viol violently tortured and raped. Right, man, because uh, many people think because of the Emancipation Proclamation that um, the so-called Negroes, uh, Judah, so-called uh, um, Native Americans, Gad, and, and uh, the so-called Seminole Indians, Reuben, they thought that these and whatever tribe that was brought here to America, you know, they thought that uh, these three tribes, was, these three tribes were free after the Emancipation Proclamation. That's not true, man. All right, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't free anything, man. It's, and slavery still going on for, for um, all the three tribes I just mentioned, man, all throughout the South, man. All right, and uh, another thing, man, you got this uh, false doctrine. Uh, we gonna be out here. Uh, we gonna be free, two thousand nineteen, man. Oh, that's a false doctrine, man. All right. That's not talking about now. That's talking about in uh, Genesis, uh, I believe Genesis chapter 15. That's talking about why we was in Egypt, man. All right. Because you look at, you see, that's why it's important to know each tribe, man. Because you look at each tribe, man, uh, throughout the American Caribbean. All right. And, and uh, our brethren scattered all around the world, man. We was, we was uh, so called free, that free uh, at different times, man. Sometimes a little bit earlier than. Uh, the tribe of Judah, uh, tribe of Judah, uh, Gad and Reuben in America, man. All right, and and sometimes a little bit, a little bit after, man. You know, so that uh, sixteen, nineteen, four hundred property, man. Bunch, bunch of bullshit, man. All right, that's false doctrine. Okay. So, uh, here we're here, Jeremiah chapter 50. First 33, it says, uh, thou said, Yahweh the host, the children of Israel, all right, the Nordic kingdom, all right, the indigenous people of the Americas, okay, uh, and the children of Judah, right, so-called Negroes, uh, Judah, uh, so-called West Indians, Benjamin, and uh, so-called uh, Haitians, Levy, all right, it says, were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held up fast, and they refused to let them go, all right, so, regardless of this Emancipation Proclamation, man, we're still a slave, man, and, and Esau, man, they old Esau, they don't want to let us go, man. He saw the so-called white man eat them, all right? Because they're red. They're not white, all right? There's nothing pure about those people, man. That's what white stand for, Laban, all right? They're evil, man. They're, they're the true black people, man, all right? These are wicked people, all right? So it says right here, it says, um, it says, um, Right, they put after me, it says, right, Judah, Phil Hand, chopping con down in the hot sun of Mississippi Delta. All right, it says, um, historian Gene Austin's Antony Hare has uncovered cases of 
Judeans still living as slaves 100 years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. It says the 57 year old Louisiana native had dedicated more than 20 years to penis research. Through her work, she unearthed painful stories in southern states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Florida. Over a series of interviews, she told Justin Foreman about how she became an expert of modern slavery in the United States. It says, my mother always talked to me about our family history and the family members who passed on. She only knew so many stories, so all the time she tell the same ones over and over again. Each time she repeated a story, I felt like she was trying to give me a message. It was like she was trying to tell me that if I wanted to know more about who we are, I had to dig deeper. We knew our family once been slaves in Louisiana. In 1994, I started to look into historical records and public records, and I found my ancestors in 1853 inventory belonged to Benjamin and Celia Baxter Richardson. Written down alongside the other personal belongings that include spoons, forts, hogs, cows, and a sofa where my great-great-grandparents, Thomas and uh, Carrie Richardson. It says Carrie, her child Thomas, had been praised at $1,100. Seeing my ancestors proceed, the file written on a piece of paper changed me. It also set forth the rest of my life. It was terribly painful, but I need to know. What did they do after emancipation in 1863? Where did they go? I tracked down freedmen contracts of Harold Sad, my family, that proved that they were sharecroppers. Worse, I spread around nuance about how I was using GI to connect the dots of lost history. Soon enough, people start requesting I come and speak. Speak about how I was uncovering my family story so they could do the same for themselves. It became a chance to find out who we were and where we came as descendants of enslaved people. And this was a chance to learn history. We never taught schools. It says the only fact seems certain that slavery ended in the past and emancipation proclamation in 1863. Even that turned out to be less than true. It says, one day a woman familiar with my work approached me and said, Antoinette, I know a group of people who didn't receive their freedom until the 1950s. She had me over to a house where I met about 20 people, all who had worked on the water, water for plantation in St. Charles Parish, Louisiana. They told me they had worked the fields for most of their lives. One way or another, they become in debt into the plantation order were now allowed to leave the property. This situation had them living their lives as 20th century slaves. At the end of harvest, when they tried to sell up with the owner, they were always told they didn't make it into the make it into the black and try again next year. Every passing year, the workers fell deeper and deeper in debt. Some of folks were tied to the land until the 1960s. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Most shocking of all was their fear. I saw time and time again, people were afraid to share their stories. They were afraid to give information to me, even behind closed doors decades later. They believed they might somehow get sent back to a plantation that wasn't even operating no more. <clears throat> All right. So as I would realize, people are afraid to share their stories because in the South, so many of the same white families who own the plantation are still running local government big businesses. All right, they still hold the power, so poor and disenfranchised really don't have have anywhere to share these injustices while fear major repercussions. All right, we fuck these crackers, man. All right, it says to most folks, it just isn't worth the risk. So sadly, most situations of this sort go unreported. Six months after that meet, I was given a lecture on genealogy and reparations in uh, at my Louisiana when I met. May Louise Walls Miller May walked in after the lecture was over. The man to speak of me, she walked up, looked me in the eye, and stated, I didn't get my freedom till 1963. It says, May father, King Will, lost his land by signing a contract he couldn't read that had sealed his entire family fate. All right, and that's one of the reasons why he saw they want the, uh, the Israelite slaves to read so called Negroes. So called Native American, so called Seminoles to be able to read, man. So he could take advantage of them, man, and also uh, keep them um, 
hidden about their Israelite heritage, man, in the, in the Bible. All right, it says, um, as a young girl may didn't know that her family situation was different from anyone else. The family didn't have TV, so may assume everyone lived the same way our brothers and sisters did. They were not permitted to leave the land and was subject to regular beatings from the land orders. When May got a bit older, she was told she would come up to work in the main house with her mother. Her, she would be raped by whatever man was present. All right. Now he is. All right. Most times she and her mother were raped. Cementized alongside each other. Okay. So that goes along with Deut Deuteronomy uh, 28 verse 30, man. All right. I'm going to say, well, uh, mom. All right. In Deuteronomy, uh, uh, let me see. No, that's it for now. It says her father, Cain, couldn't take the suffering anymore and tried to flee the property by himself in the middle of the night. His uh, plan was to register for, for the army and get stationed far away. But he was picked up by some folks claiming they would help him. Instead, they took him um, right back to the farm where he was brutally beaten in front of his family. Okay. It says, well, may about, f um, um, let's see. When May was about 14, she decided she will no longer go up to the house. Her family plead with her as punishment will come down on all of them. May refused and sassed the farm owner's wife when she told her to work, worrying that May will be killed by the owners. Cain beat his own daughter bloody in hopes of saving her. All right, it says uh, the evening is still covered in. The evening, still covered in blood, May ran away through the woods, and she was hiding in the bushes by the road when a family rode with by their mule cart. All right, the lady on the cart saw the bush move when she got off the family, made crying, bloody, and terrified. That white family took her in and, and rescued the rest of the walls later that night. It says these stories are more common than you think. There were also Polish, Hungarian, Italian, and Wales, other national who got cut up situations in uh, America. So now, uh, some of the Italian immigrants that came from uh, uh, Sicily, all right, something in the East, all tricked them, asked them to work, uh, to work really when they arrived in America. He enslaved them. This like this like at the at the uh, at the very end of it. So-called mass page proclamation, all right? They came at the very end, man, of Jake's from Italy. All right. Uh, Wells other uh, national got caught in situations in the American South, but the vast majority of 20th century slaves were of uh, Israelite descent. It says, when I met, when I met May, her father came was still alive. He was 107 years old, but his man was still incredibly sharp. A few times we sat together with May, other siblings, it was brutal, uh, uh, conscious for them to speak about what happened on that farm. I'll never forget the look in their eyes when one speak about the horror they endured. It was clear they had never shared of his stories with one another. It was something that was in the past, so there was never a reason to bring it up. One day, came when watching television, there was a Caucasian man with a stark white hair in the program. The way he looked must remind it came someone from the farm. Can't believe that. Because he had told me what happened on the farm, that the man on TV was going to come to his house and drag him back. Opened the suppressed memory, upset him so much, he ended up in the hospital. The family kept me away for a while after that. Okay. So, you know, that's about it. You can read the, the rest of it, man. All right. So, um. And, you know, so just show you, man, that 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 uh, Emancipation Proclamation um, it really didn't free the Israelites in America, man. Okay, because you're free while all through Scripture, Most High say He's gonna deliver us, man. He gonna get us out of this this uh this this hellhole, man. All right, Jeremiah twenty three verse eight. All right.
<clears throat> okay. You know. So you're not free, man. You, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans you're still slaves, man. You got that social security number. You can't do what you want to do. You got no rights. People killing you in the streets. Okay. So you you and you you uh you into that uh plantation Christianity, man. You don't know your true nationality. All right. So so you're slaves, man. And you're paying taxes. You playing tribute to uh uh Caesar Esau. All right, and he's keeping in check with his uh, cen uh, uh, his uh, centurions, man, the police. Okay, so I'm in that shot one.